This is an SQL mock test for grade 12 in IT. We're just going to do a couple of practice questions in this mock test. So let's do the first four questions. So we're going to go to the bottom. Let's first understand what we're dealing with. So yeah, we've got a database, a school database, which has a whole bunch of tables. We've got two tables. One's about the learners, so learners TB, and one about the educators, the teachers. So there we've got the, the teachers table or educator table, the title, initial, surname, the teacher code, which is just a two-letter code. We can see an example over here. The subject that they teach, there's only one subject, and then the number of students that they teach. So there we can see the data that is in the educators TB table. The other table is the learners table, where we've got the surname and name of the learner. Um, the register teacher, which is the teaching code. So, so AA, so for example, that teacher is the register teacher of the student. And then they've got different groups for which they can have different subjects. So there's obviously the language group and the second language group and then the maths and maths list group and so on. So it tells you what possibilities there are for that. And then the teachers, the teacher codes are listed like that. So we can see who teaches English and who teaches Afrikaans and so on and so on. Okay, and they tell us that the teacher code from the educator table is linked to the registered teacher field. So that registered teacher field, so that is linked to the teacher code. So that's the primary key in that case. I'm assuming, yes, the teacher code is the primary key. Fantastic. So let's get into the first four questions. Question one, complete the SQL. It's going to display all the fields of the educator table, all the fields. And it must be in alphabetical order according to their surname. So it must look something like that. That's quite an easy one. So let's go to our program. So there's our program. We're going to do it in Delphi. And all we have to do is double click on the button. And there we can just write the SQL code. And in the string, it will add the SQL to the query component, the ADO query. And it will open it. So hopefully we can see the results. So we're going to start off with a select. And they said select, they said display all the fields. So instead of listing them all, we can just say select star and that will automatically say all of them. And then we must say from which table are we looking at? We are looking at the educators table. Make sure that you spell it correctly. I want to double check that we are educator, not educators. Yes, that's correct. From the educators. Now there's no where clause, there's no criteria. We can go straight into the order bar. And here we must say what we want to sort it by. Now they want us to sort it alphabetically according to the surname. Okay, so we want to sort it according to the surname. So we can say surname. Now you could technically just leave it like this because the default will be ascending order. But if you want to specify, you can put in a capital ASC like that. If you want descending, you'll put DESC. But let's see how that works. If that works, let's see if it runs. And hopefully there are no errors. Question one runs the SQL. There we go. And it looks pretty similar to what we want over here. Yes, that looks like it's spot on. So there we go. That is question one. Let's move on to question two. Complete the code for the button two. We want to display the surname, title, and teacher code of the educators. Of all the educators that teach a language, they teach either English, Afrikaans, or Kosa. So that's the educator. So we're looking at the subjects that they teach. Now the code, they've shown us what the codes are. English, Afrikaans, Klasa. So let's go to question number two, that button there. So we want to select. Doesn't matter if it's capitals or not. I like doing it so we can differentiate what's what. What do we want to display? We want to display the title, surname, and teacher code. So title, surname, and teacher code. There they display the subjects, but just to double check. So we're going to go teacher title, surname, and teacher code. Make sure that you spell your fields correctly as they are in the database. Um, I'm going to put subjects in just so we can see the results. I just want to see the results. I know the diagram is actually wrong there. It shouldn't display that there. I'm going to put subjects. We can always take this out at the end just to make sure that our results are correct. From which table? We take it from the educators TB table and our where clause. Now, this is the tricky part. We want our where clause to be, it must be one of those three options. Okay, so 
um, we can so the subjects they can't be all three at the same time it's got to be one or the other so we're gonna say where the subjects field is it subjects or subject do you remember that subjects is equal now it's equal to the text ENG so that's why we put double quotes around it or subjects could equal AFR for Afrikaans or subjects can equal we have to write out subjects every single time you can't just say subjects equals english or afrikaans or you got to say subjects equal to english or subjects equal to afrikaans it needs to know which field you're referring to and the x h o for kosa is that correct let's see it looks like it's okay okay so let's just run it to see if it works and then we can take out the subjects part so we're running it there so if we scroll down Yep, there's some also there, some English, some Afrikaans, fantastic. And now, once I know that my results are okay, the question said we mustn't display subjects. So I'm going to take that out. And there we go. Now it's correct. Fantastic. Just always remember to save. Make sure that we don't lose our work. Question three. Complete the SQL for that. Button three determines how many learners have chosen RT. So we are going to be doing an aggregate uh, function where we count how many records there are because aggregate we can find the average, we can find the max, the min, sum. This we want to count how many times we see the the, the letter R T in S five. Okay, up here. So we're looking for S five. We want to count how many R Ts there are. So that's going to be an aggregate aggregate function. Blah, blah, blah. Aggregate. So we want to say, let's go over here. We want to select and we're going to say the aggregate function which field are we counting well we count in that field okay the s5 field and we want it from which table i think that's from the learners table if i'm correct where do we get the rt we get that from the from the learners table so that's important we make sure we use the right table from the learners TB where the S5 field is equal to RT. That's important. So only count it where it's equal to RT. So let's run it and see what it does. We know what the answer should be. It should be 23. So we get the 23, but you'll notice our display is very different. It, does, it doesn't have the word RT numbers at the top. Hmm. Well, for that, we must use the as operator next to the count. And then we can put in square brackets, whatever field we want, or whatever name we want that field to be. So I'm going to say RT numbers, and I'll put it in square brackets. Let's see what that looks like. Number three. There we go. So RT numbers, there are 23 RT students. Fantastic. And let's do the last question for this video. Number four, complete the SQL code for button four. That will display the names and surnames of all the learners that have Miss Barclay, which is the teacher codes MB as a teacher. Now, how do we know that Miss Barclay is their teacher? So we're looking at the number of students. Well, we want the number of students, right? So let's have a look. We're going to go up here to the learners. How many of them have Miss Barclay as a teacher? Now we're not looking at them as a registered, we're looking at them as a teacher. So how many oh look, it's somewhere in here. So MB is in there. Now do we know exactly where it's gonna be? Probably not. So we know that MB will be somewhere in the teacher's field. Hmm. How do I find somewhere in the teacher's field? So let's go into the code. We're going to do question four. We're going to select and we want the names and surnames names and surnames so name comma surname i'm going to put that teachers field in as well with the teachers field i'm going to put that in as well so we can see the results we'll remove it at the end just to make sure that we can see that our results are correct we're doing this from the learners table where now i want my criteria to be that MB, the code MB is somewhere in the teacher's field. 
could be at the beginning, could be at the end, could be in the middle. So that means we're going to have to use the um, like uh, operator. So we're going to use, instead of saying where teachers is equal to MB, we can't do that because there's no field in the teachers that is exactly MB. That's looking for it to be exactly MB. We want it to be like MB, but there could be stuff in front of it. There could be stuff at the end of it. Now, if you were doing this in normal SQL, you would put stars around it. Stars meaning anything or nothing. So there could be anything or nothing in front of the MB, or anything or nothing at the end of the MB. But this probably won't work because the moment, I'm going to test it, see no results. And you go, why is it not? This would work in SQL if we did this in Access, for example. But the moment we do a query in Delphi, those stars must become percentage signs rather than rather use the percentage sign. So we're looking for the teachers field where there's a MB either at the beginning or an MB at the end or somewhere in the middle. So those percentage signs means anything or nothing. So there we go. So we've got some results. You see there's an MB there, there's an MB there. Yeah, so we can see that the MB is in random places. So it's picking it up that there's an MB in those fields. So that's great. So now we can just take the teachers part out and now it'll display exactly like it does in this question. Question four. Boom. So there we go. Let's just test it. And voila. Perfect. Okay. Our next video will do the next four questions. And then our third video will be do the last three. For the other videos in this video series, please go to our YouTube channel, subscribe. We'd love to hear from you, so give us feedback on our Facebook page and Twitter. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.